All right, guys, welcome to our Poop Scoop Monday. Let's talk about Poop Podcast. Let me do that again. Sorry about that. So welcome to our Let's Talk About Poop God, I can't. One more time. Let me see if I can do this live again. All right. Welcome to our Let's Talk About Poop Podcast, where it's a show where we do a deep dive into everything going on inside your GI tract. I'm your host, Dr. Islam, where I do a podcast every week going into what is going on inside your body and your health. Who am I? I'm a board certified gastroenterologist trained at the Mayo Clinic. I've been practicing as a GI doctor for over 10 years. I've written hundreds of articles on conditions in your GI tract and I've treated thousands of patients as well. Every Monday, I do a podcast in which I go into a deep dive in a topic and towards the end, I go on my live streams, on my social media accounts to answer any questions you guys have as well. If you're new to this podcast, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Give us a five-star rating on Apple iTunes and on Spotify. And if you want to learn more, don't forget to share it with your friends. Also, tune in every single week. We have a great show today. We're going to be doing a deep dive on a condition called CSID, which is a very It's an upcoming condition that we're seeing more and more in adults, and we're actually diagnosing patients with this condition as well. And so we'll do this in the very beginning of the podcast, and then towards the end, we'll be discussing any live questions you guys have as well. If you're watching on the live stream, don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe. Let let me know if you're watching this live or on the replay as well. Let me know what questions you guys have as well. So let's begin on our first half, CSID. So CSID is actually a more common condition that we're seeing in the GI tract. So let me tell you a story. Um, Have you been told you've had IBS, especially diarrhea, and you've tried everything you can to get your IBS taken care of? You tried dietary options, you tried supplements, you tried medical therapies, and it did not seem to work. And are you frustrated by that? Well, let me tell you, you're not alone, and you actually may be suffering from CSID. So what does CSID stand for? This stands for congenital sucrase, Osmotase deficiency. And this is now becoming a more common diagnosis in the adult world. So CSID is a very common condition that we've seen in pediatrics. And we've been diagnosing patients with this in our pediatric GI colleagues. But more recently, we are seeing more and more adults being diagnosed with this because we now have an awareness of this. And because we have awareness, we now can treat patients what is going on. So when you have CSID, you actually have the inability to digest certain sugars and starches as well. So the certain foods that you're eating may make it more difficult for it to pass through into your body to allow you to digest it properly. So it's as if a bomb goes off in your stomach, it explodes, and all of a sudden you have these issues that can occur from that. Very common condition that we're seeing more and more, and we're seeing more and more patients being diagnosed with this. So what are the symptoms of CSID. So this may sound familiar. Watery diarrhea, a lot of bloating, a lot of gas, a lot of belching, abdominal pain. Now, if this sounds familiar to you, you actually may be suffering from this as well because a lot of these patients get misdiagnosed as IBS. So they've been told they have IBS. They tried all the IBS treatment, and guess what? They're not feeling better. In fact, they're feeling worse than what they did before, and they're frustrated with their doctors, with their with their symptoms, with what's going on, and the fact that they're not getting better as well. And so, very calmly, I get second opinions from patients who have quote-unquote IBS, and they're being treated as such, and they've been told they've been having IBS, but they're not getting better. And so, because I, I, I'm i diagnosing these patients with CSID and know what's going on, I read the literature, we are getting more and more individuals who are getting diagnosed with this condition. We're actually get, able to help them uh, as well. So if you are one of those million, millions of patients who have IBS that's not getting better, you actually may have CSID. You may need somebody who's an expert on this to find out exactly what is going on. So how do we diagnose you with CSID, with this deficiency in metabolizing certain starches or sugars? There's two ways we can diagnose you with this. One is that we can do what's called a breath test, where you drink a whole bunch of starch, and we actually see if you produce the gas to see that you have a positive test. If you have this, this is an accurate way for us to kind of see what's going on. Another way that I do, that I actually recommend, is to do what's called an upper endoscopy or an EGD. So we actually go down while you're asleep 
into your small intestine and will actually take biopsies of that area. Now, the important thing about this is that you have to have a high clinical suspicion that you have somebody who has CSID because not a, a regular biopsy is not going to be able to cut it, nor is a regular lab going to be able to diagnose you with this condition. You need to have a special biopsy done with special a special lab being sent for to see if you have this condition because this is the only way we can diagnose you. You have to have a high clinical suspicion and with that, you have to send that specimen to a special lab. So any routine EGD is not gonna cache this. So if you've already had an EGD done, upper scope done, and they didn't actually specifically test you for this, you still may have this issue going on and you could be suffering from these conditions as well. And so the important thing is that you need to make sure that your doctor has a high degree of suspicion that you have this condition. And how do you know, once again, you're gonna be one of those IBS patients that are not getting better. You're trying the dietary options, you're not getting better. You're trying the IBS medications, you're not getting better. You're trying everything you can, you're not getting better. You may be one of those that actually has this genetic predisposition to have CSID. And so you need to tell your doctor, hey, I wanna get tested for this and see if they have the capabilities to do that. Obviously we do in our clinic to see exactly what is going on um, with our patients as well. So let's say you have CSID, what do you do? How do we treat this? Well, you need to avoid the foods that actually have these particular enzymes that you can't digest. High starch foods and high sucrose foods and maltase foods as well. So these are foods like meats, seafoods, sauces, breads, pastas, potatoes. There's a lot of foods that are specific for this diet. And so if we have somebody who has this condition and we diagnose them with this, we actually are going to put them on a particular diet to get them feeling better. Now this diet can be restrictive and unfortunately the diet has to be long-term as well. And it can be hard for some patients to be on this diet, which means we also have another option is that we can actually give you a digestive enzyme called sucrate, which is an oral solution that allows you to eat those particular foods in moderation and not have those symptoms. And so sometimes we'll do the combination of dietary options and or medical therapy or we do both, we kind of pick and choose exactly what's going to be the best option for you so we can get you feeling better as well. But we are seeing a lot of patients with this. So how do you know if you have this? Once again, I have to stress this. You've been diagnosed with IBS and you're not getting better. It's as simple as that. Because if you're not getting better with your symptoms, A, why are you still doing the same thing? It doesn't make any sense. And then B, get tested for CSID so we can see exactly what's going on and we can get down to the root cause of why you're having these issues and hopefully get you feeling better. So if you are wondering if you have CSID, come see us up at Gastro where we can diagnose you and treat you with this condition and hopefully get you feeling better as well. If you want to learn, learn more, don't forget to subscribe to our uh, channel and our website and our pages so we can get you more information on that um, as well. All right, so that's my deep dive on the first part of our podcast. Let's go and answer some questions you guys have asked me uh, as well. So question number one, hey, Dr. Islam, what is my recommendation on citrus cell and can you take it every single day? So citrus cell is fantastic. It is one of the fibers that I recommend for all my patients. And one of the benefits about citrus cell is that it is, it is a synthetically made fiber, meaning you don't have a lot of the side effects with other fibers that are there like bloating, distension, nausea, gas. And I do recommend citrus cell, and I recommend you can take it every single day. Absolutely. It is a great option when it comes to gut issues to get you feeling better and to get your gut taken care of uh, as well. You want to typically aim for 25 to 30 grams of fiber per day to hopefully make sure you have the best dietary options when it comes to your gut issues uh, as well. All right, question number two. Hey, Dr. Islam, I have been told that I may be at higher risk of developing colon cancer. What can I do? to prevent my risk for developing colon cancer? All right, great question. I'm gonna give you five tips that I recommend. And the fifth tip is a teaser here. It's probably the most important one. So tip number one, you need to make sure you have a healthy diet. So a diet that's high in plants and vegetables is critical when it comes to decreasing your risk for developing colon cancer. We know colon cancer can develop in those individuals that have a high meat-based diet, beef, pork, if your predominant of your if your diet is predominantly this, this is going to destroy your gut 
and make things worse for your colon. Number two, being obese also is a risk factor for developing colon cancer and colon polyps. So do what you can to lose that weight and do what you can, especially if you have that central boost obesity, to lose that weight around your belly. Tip number three, we know if you have a family history of colon cancer or colon polyps, especially if it's a first degree relative, you are at higher risk. And so irrespective of whatever you do, that genetic component of having a first degree relative with either colon polyps or colon cancer is going to substantially increase your risk for developing colon cancer. Tip number four, try to eliminate or minimize alcohol. Alcohol is a direct toxin to your body, to your liver, to your stomach, but also it can increase your risk of developing colon polyps and colon cancer. So minimize or even eliminate alcohol. And number five, the most important thing that you can do is to get your colonoscopy. Don't be scared, guys. The colonoscopy by far is the best way to prevent colon cancer. I know you got to take a prep. I know you got to take time off from work, but taking a prep is better than taking the chemotherapy you may need for a colon cancer. And taking day taking one day off from work is certainly better than taking off months for having a diagnosis of colon cancer. So you can do everything right, but still get colon cancer if you don't get your colonoscopy done. And keep in mind, colon cancer probably is the most preventable cancer that's out there. And the best way for us to prevent this is to do a colonoscopy to make sure uh, everything is going on uh, okay there. All right, perfect. Um, next question. Hey, Dr. Islam, um, I have heard that trouble swallowing is not normal. What are your thoughts? So I'm glad you asked this question because absolutely, we see this all the time in our patients. I see patients come to see me all the time who say, hey, doc, things are getting suck. I'm like, did you not know that's not normal? Of course it's not normal. So trouble swallowing is not normal. That's called dysphagia. And if you have trouble swallowing, don't just get things that are stuck there, get it out, get it fixed. And so we can do what's called an upper endoscopy on EGD to see what's going on, fix the problem, and resolve the issue as well. So if you're having trouble swallowing, come see us up at Gastro so we can get down to the root cause and get that fixed for you as well. It's easy, we put you to sleep, it's a small camera, and I can take a look while you're asleep, don't worry. See why you're having trouble swallowing, fix the issue at that time, and hopefully make sure it doesn't come back. All right, perfect. Great question. All right. All right, guys. I think that's all the questions we have for today. I want to thank you for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you guys on future videos. Thanks and take care.